forward. All right. So our first presenter is going to be Mike, and he's coming from us from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and he's going to talk about how the team he was part of created a new labor productivity measure, and then how they used the R US map package to display all of that. So I'll let Mike take it away. All right, thanks, Emily. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, great. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to uh, GeoDC for having me today. And let me go ahead and get started with my slideshow. Yeah, so uh, like Emily said, my name is Mike Jadu. I'm from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And just a um, short uh, disclaimer that uh, during this presentation, I'll give you today any views or opinions expressed by me are my own and not reflective of the agency. So yeah, today I'm just going to show you um, give present to you some information about our new data product which is the state labor productivity measure that our office just recently uh, pub uh, started publishing so it's an experimental series so i'm going to talk a little bit more about the methodology and then i'm going to some displays about um how you can display our data using r right, the us map package so but it's mostly going to be about methodology because it was just it was a really interesting uh, experience so yeah, our, our office uh, produces, or is known for producing the labor productivity as a uh, labor productivity, which is a measure of economic performance that compares the amount of goods and services, which is output, with the number of hours worked to produce those goods and services. So the index of labor productivity measures, uh, we measure the broad economic sectors. We also produce the, uh, the data quarterly and annual measures. So the state level productivity is more of an annual measure, a data series, data time series. And yeah, so yeah, on June 4th, 2019, our office published the experimental series of state labor productivity and costs for the private non-farm sector starting in 2007, which includes output per hour, which is labor productivity, output, uh, hours worked by all persons, uh, unit labor costs, and other economic indicators. So by analyzing state level uh, labor productivity measures, data users can learn about regional business cycles, uh, any persistence of regional income inequalities and determine which states are driving the national productivity trends. So here in this presentation, I'm going to be talking about the, the purpose of why we produce uh, the data. Um, we're going to cover some, I'm going to cover the data sources that we use to create the estimate and then I'll show some cool visualizations. So the purpose of the, yes, yeah, so the purpose of uh, the, what we had done, um, you have to produce the state level uh, productivity data just kind of blocking here. Yeah. Yeah, we, our main purpose was to produce it for the public and also so that our data users can measure um, labor productivity at the state level. So the main reasons, yeah, what, what uh, we did conducted a study and um, we, our study, we wanted to create this uh, state level um, productivity data because our data users frequently ask us for state level David, um, labor productivity. Also, researchers have been putting together state productivity measures, but with limited scope, output per worker. So that's just output and then employment data at the state level. And that's actually not, not too accurate. Um, yeah, and also we want to uh, uh, produce this data so that um, people conduct state by state comparison. So our team was tasked, we had a team of, of the different economists in our office was tasked to uh, determine whether we can actually feasibly construct this measure. So for two years, we got together and we started looking at the granular level labor um, data series that we can uh, use to construct these measures at the state level. And our also task was to see if we could come up with any other related labor productivity measures. And it was, we, this is searching around and we discovered that um, some of the main components for the state level uh, labor productivity measures, we was able to find the average weekly hours, which are produced by the current employment statistics office at the BLS. They have it at the state level. So for all employees and they covered to 2007, which is one of the reasons why our data only goes to 2007 because of average weekly hours. Next, uh, we're looking for employment data because we want to get the total hours worked so we've got the average weekly hours. We need to multiply that by the number of people working. 
So we have the, uh, we found that data from the, Q, the quarterly census and employment wages office, the QCW, and uh, also from the current employment statistics office. So both of these offices produce employment data at the state level. Next, there's also output. So the value added output at the state level, we discovered it was produced regularly on quarterly and annual, but we only used it for the annual by the Bureau of Economic Analysis. And with all those um, pieces and a couple more, I'll probably discuss later on, uh, we, we were able to come up with output per hour. So yes, we can do it. So a little bit more about the data. I'm gonna cover output. All right, so um, the BEA produces the value added output, which is the, um, which is the measure, yes, yeah, so that's the measure that we use uh, for, um, for our state level productivity measure. Uh, one of the challenges that we had was that we wanted to match up our national output measure with, um, we wanna match up the state level uh, output data with our national measure. And we had to uh, adjust it to match up with our national measures uh, methodology. So one of the things that uh, we had to adjust was different sectors that were not, that wasn't covered at the national level. So uh, one of the things that we had to adjust for was um, private household workers and also on the occupied housing. And because uh, at the state level, we wanted to produce a private non-farm sector, we also removed the farm sector from the, uh, from, from the output at the state level. So those are the co couple of things that we had made adjustment for. Next, uh, there's a couple of inputs. So we have inputs, we have hours and employment. So this is the equation about how we came up with total hours worked for all employees. So we have on the right side of this equation, we have N, which is total employment. So that's from the, the what I mentioned before, the QCW employment data and the CES employment data. And next we have the average weekly hours, which is produced by the uh, current employment statistics office. And then we also have a ratio of hours worked to hours paid ratio, which I'll talk about in a second. And there is a, uh, the, the last variable in this equation here is the self-employed and unpaid workers, uh, unpaid family workers hours worked. So that is, uh, so we, we also capture information from sole proprietors. So we wanna get all employees, I mean, all workers, not just employees, all workers, those who are self-employed and also unpaid workers as well, because we wanna get their hours. So yeah. Um, so the employment is primarily based on the CES and then a little bit from the KCW. And then the, we get for the sole proprietors and the unpaid family workers, we get that from the current population survey. So we get the information uh, from there. And once we put all that together, so, um, and you saw the equation that I shown in the previous slide, it was, we were able to produce uh, hours worked by all people who's working in the economy. So um, like I mentioned before, one of our main things for our team was to match up the state uh, um, output and hours concept methodology with our national measures that we produce. And so one of the things that we do every year, I mean, our, our data is fairly new. And every time we are about to publish, we pu uh, produce the two, um, two releases already for, for this experimental series. And every time we do that, we also do a review meeting where we just match up the data. And one of the things that we do we look at the data and the one thing we do is that we line up this aggregated states um, totals for output and also hours and compare that to our national estimate to see how it lines up and as you can see in this chart here it lines up pretty closely except for we see an output there's a little bit of a difference that you can see with the state aggregated u.s total compared to our national measure now this is uh, the reason for that we have we're seeing this kind of situation here is because they're um, in the state uh, level output, we're unable or we are at this time, we, we are unable to make an adjustment for nonprofits. So this is where we have the difference here. So not for the national estimates, we remove nonprofits from output, but here um, we, but for the states, 
we actually we kept it in at this time. But so that's just a situation we're kind of looking at right now to see um, how we can make an accurate adjustment for nonprofits at the state level. Yeah, feel free anytime to ask questions. So uh, our data released typically on, on June of every year and is be located on our website, and which is, I had posted in the chat our, with our website to, um, it's for you to, uh, to get to. All right, so next, what you can do with our data. You can use our data to create some really cool maps. So here I'm using an example of the US using, using R and the US map package here, we, I'm using the plot underscore US map function to display our data. And see here, we could, uh, using this function, we could actually uh, create regions. Here, I'm showing the West Coast of, yeah, the different states in the West Coast and the different productivity. So this is a core plot map, for those of you um, who are just wondering. And here, yeah, I'm just showing um, the diff we have here the percentage change over time. So this is for 2018, 2019 growth rate of labor productivity. And yeah, we have the West Coast. And go do the same thing for the East Coast. Yeah, and just using the, yeah, using the same plot underscore US map. And here's another example of how you can uh, display our data using this, uh, using this package in R. We have the, yeah, just the whole US, um, the, whole, the whole country with the different states. And we have the 2016, 2017 uh, year of year growth. So this is actually the 2017 growth rate. And uh, yeah, we can see all the different states and how it lines up as far as labor productivity. And then we see it again for the 2018 growth. And yeah, and the, yeah, this is a link to our data in case you're curious and want to check it out. And that's actually, I think that's time. Did I, yeah. Thank awesome. you. Yeah, you It'll have any- It'll be interesting uh, to see if uh, productivity goes down 2020, 2020 yeah. right? <laughs> Does anyone have uh, questions that they want to ask? We have a couple minutes. I just yes. had one question. So what uh, of the non-farm employment sort of like really difficult to estimate for employment? Like what sectors are you like, well, this is just hard to measure productivity. So your question is what sectors that we use to measure the non-farm? Right, our, our pro like are really a problem like you know, like maybe the restaurant business or something that just doesn't work very well. Oh, well, the main, one of the main problems we ran into was uh, in farm, the farm sector. So the, the next industry 111, uh, that was a little bit difficult to, to get uh, information on, but we were able to get some data from the QCW for uh, a subsector within the agriculture uh, the, the NAICS agriculture sector. But um, yeah, the farm was hard and also uh, nonprofits, but nonprofits is, is not really a specific NAICS sector. But yeah, the answer to your question was farm. Uh, I have a question. So um, why, why did you guys choose to use uh, labor productivity as opposed to something like total factor productivity? And what are some of the advantages of using labor productivity as opposed to something like total factor productivity? That's a great question. Um, so with total factor productivity, which is also known as multi-factor productivity, uh, where the inputs is a combination of labor input, which would be our total hours worked, and also capital measures. And so at the state level, uh, there isn't any, um, there isn't really any data available at the state level for capital measures. So capital measures being equipment, structures, inventories, um, I guess, 
there could be some land data, but there are also intellectual property products and, and those uh, different components of, of capital. So that there are some limited um, coverage by the census of capital data at the state level for manufacturing, but that's it's, it's very, very limited. But actually, there, I believe there was one point the census had a um, census was actually many years ago tried to collect data at the state level on capital measures, but that project uh, just didn't um, didn't really happen, or there was there's this issue with that which at that project. But I mean, we would love to be able to get our hands on that data and construct a total factor. Um, total factor productivity measure at the state level. But yeah, this, that, the data is just not, doesn't exist right now. I feel a little churlish after these very intelligent economic questions, but looking at the map, um, the, uh, the East Coast was all crammed together and graphically it looked like standoffs or something like that would uh, really improve readability for those of us who don't remember like which is Rhode Island and which is Delaware. Mm -hmm. um, is there like, is this simply something you didn't get around to and you know there are such options or is any R map on that scale gonna look that way? Um, I just didn't get around to make it, uh, make it look nicer. But I, I believe that there are different options within R that you can display the East Coast states a lot better uh -huh. for your map. Okay. There are, there are several, several different options in R which you can make it look a lot better. Actually, I would actually recommend um, using the leaflet package. The leaflet produces very, very beautiful maps. And if so, you love creating maps, leaflet is the package for you in R. So why did you choose this package rather than leaflet? Oh, uh, leaflet is, is more dynamic and I wouldn't be able to display it uh, in, in this setting where I'm using Zoom and doing a screen share. It's, yeah, it, it would have took a little bit more time. Okay, thanks. And plus, we've I, had, uh, I, oh, sorry. We've got one more question in the um, that came to me in the chat that I wanted to get to before we move on. Yeah. Um, so the question was, uh, why did you choose um, state data? They're just wondering if the state is the most appropriate regional unit for displaying this, um, or if there's a specific reason for the state. Uh, that's a great question. We asked there one can actually construct um, data at the MSA level. So that's the metropolitan statistical area level. And I'm not too sure about the county level uh, where you could construct labor productivity or any kind of productivity measure at, at that uh, granular level of data. So state was just one of the easiest, what well, was one of the easier options for us to tackle. But that even even doing that took a little bit of time and researching and, and looking at different um, uh, different data sources and, and comparing the methodology with our primary indicator, which is um, yeah, comparing the methodology with our primary indicator for our office. So it this at the state level, it was it was um, we were able to to handle that uh, more quickly. 